Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This tutorial is for this gorgeous bag called the Ira Tote by Bagstock Designs. As you can see, it is a bigger bag. However, I promise it doesn't take long to sew at all. So let's discuss some features of this bag. First, we have these handles which have a double-sided, so they are two-toned, just like that, which is beautiful, I love it. They're attached here to the main, to the front panels of the bag, there are some rivets used, however, if you don't have rivets, you can definitely omit the rivets. I've also added a handmade tag here. Again, that is completely optional. You do not have to add it. On the front of the bag, you'll see that there is this zipper pocket, which is big enough for my brick of a cell phone. So it fits inside perfectly. So you could even probably fit a wallet in there if you wanted to have something in there that you really wanted to get to really quickly. The bottom of the bag does have an option for purse feet. However, I didn't have rose gold purse feet, so I didn't add them. The back of the bag looks like the front of the bag minus the zipper pocket. If you want to have the back of the bag to have that same zipper pocket on the front, you would just simply cut all the same pieces you cut for the front of the bag and repeat all those steps to put the zipper pocket on the back as well. Because if you're like me, I do like lots of zipper pockets and I probably would have added that pocket to the back if I wasn't filming the tutorial. But for tutorial purposes, I followed the pattern exactly as written. When we look down into the bag, you can see that there is a zipper closure. And on the end of the zipper is this nice little zipper end, a metal zipper end. When you look inside the bag, you can see it's extremely roomy, lots of space in there. And then on the one side is a big zipper pocket. And then on the other side is a slip pocket, which I've divided into three sections. So two bigger ones and a smaller one. You can use this for pens or I have an EpiPen. So I'm just going to slip my EpiPen in there. But the slip pocket is perfect for any items you don't want lost in the bottom of the bag, just like your zipper pocket. So I'm just going to zip that back closed. The front of the bag, what I really like about it is you could fussy cut some fabric or maybe do a feature with some embroidery on the, these panels here on the front. That would be really beautiful. The zipper here, you'll notice mine closes to the right side of the bag or the left side of the bag when you're looking at it. That's because when I wear my bags, I like to be able to use one hand to open my zipper pocket and close it. But in the pattern, it is instructed to have the zipper closing over on that side instead. That was just a personal preference, something I've changed myself. So again, this is the Ira Tote by Bagstock Designs. I'm going to walk you through all the steps and give you all the information and share some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started sewing our Ira Totes. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. The reason for this is there's often information that designers give that's important to the pattern, such as information about interfacings, or maybe there's some pieces that need to be cut a little bit differently depending on the materials you're using. And it's also important to read through the pattern to familiarize yourself with the pattern so you know how the bag is going to be made. It also helps you to read through because you can make some markings ahead of time, you can cut zippers to length, gather all your hardware, things like that. In this pattern, before we continue on with everything that I need to give you, in the pattern there is some information that you do need to make note of and the information is on some pattern pieces. So for example, on this piece, with it, which is piece F, you need to take note of when you're cutting this, so when you're cutting your exterior material and when you're cutting your interfacing because they do have to be cut a specific way. So I'm using a material that is a non-fraying material and I can't use my iron on this. This is a faux leather. So because I'm using this, I didn't add any woven interfacing to the back of my material. However, if you're using cotton, you will want to interface it with a woven interfacing. So when you cut this piece, you will trace the pattern piece from the right side of the fabric or the vinyl. If you want to trace your pattern piece on the wrong side of your material, you will simply flip the pattern piece so the writing is against the wrong side of your material. But to make it easier, have it so that your material is right sides up, so pretty sides facing you, and then the pattern piece is right sides up so you see the writing. When you go to cut your interfacing for this piece, you will want to cut it so that the tacky side or sticky side, the glue side, is facing up towards you and your pattern piece is facing the right side up. So that means the writing will be facing you and the glue for the interfacing will be 
facing up. So I just wanted to make note of that. That is for a couple of the pattern pieces and it is written on the pattern pieces which pieces you need to make these notes of. So basically you're mirroring your interfacing. So you want to take note of that before you start cutting all your pattern pieces. So when you have done, when you have finished reading through the pattern, you can go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces. Again, making note of any interfacing that needs to be cut or pattern pieces, whatever way they need to be cut, and maybe making note of if there's pattern pieces that you need to cut differently because of the material you're using. Once you've read through the pattern, go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces. Now, I've already gone ahead and cut mine out. Um, because I don't show any pattern pieces, measurements, rulers, mats. I don't show anything like that. And there's a few reasons for that. First reason is for protection of the designer. Second reason is because I often film my tutorials during testing and in testing measurements or pattern pieces, things like that can change because during testing that's when we're finding if any issues, if there is any. So when I film, I don't want to give any of that information because it could change when it comes time to release the pattern. And this way here, there will be no confusion for you while you're following along sewing with me. So you will need to have your pattern either printed beside you or open on another device or even on your laptop and you just minimize the screen with the video and then have your pattern open and you can scroll through the pattern as you're following along. Another thing to mention is I do film this like a sew along. So that being that means that when I'm sewing, I don't speed up the parts. When I'm pinning or clipping, I don't speed up the parts. To keep it interesting though, I do sometimes give some tips and tricks, some little extra things to help you for the current bag you're working on or even take those over and use them for another bag or anything else that you're making. So it makes it a little bit more interesting. If you don't want to sit and wait for that part to finish because it takes a little bit long, definitely speed up or fast forward through those parts that you don't want to see. That way there you can get through the bag faster. Now the tutorial may seem like it's a bit long. That's just because I go into a lot of detail. I'm really explaining things. It may not take you as long to make this bag. It may take you a little bit longer. That's okay. Work at your own pace and what you're comfortable with. The end goal is definitely just to make a beautiful gorgeous bag. So now that I have all my pattern pieces cut and my interfacing fused, I've also gone ahead because I read ahead and cut all my zippers to length. I've also made some markings. So on this, this is my base piece. I've made markings for where some purse feet will go. I've done my center markings. I've also gone ahead and marked what the pattern piece is, so the corresponding letter. I've marked where I need to stop or start sewing on pattern pieces. And I've also folded and pressed some of my pattern pieces just so that I'm not having to stop the video and restart while we're filming or while I'm going along making the tutorial. I will show you how I do this. I won't leave any out. However, sometimes when I'm filming, if there's say like this handle and I have to make two, I'll show one on camera, I'll pause the camera, I'll go off camera and I will do the second um, handle or whatever else has a multiple piece to it. So now I'm ready to go. We're going to start with the first thing, which is our base. So you need your base pieces and for these there is your base piece cut from your exterior, your base piece cut from your interfacing and then there's going to be a piece of foam. Now I thought I had purse feet but I don't so I can't put purse feet on this bag. So what I'm going to do is just explain to you what you need to do. So on your interfacing after it's attached so you have that heavy base interfacing so Peltex or Decoville or equivalent that's attached to your exterior piece here. You'll measure in from the edges of your interfacing, so not the edge of the base piece, the edges of the interfacing, and make marks. And those marks are on the pattern piece, so you can transfer them over, but there are measurements that you can use. Once you have those measurements marked, you'll want to attach this as per your manufacturer's instructions. And I also like to always put an extra piece of duct tape over the prongs of the feet, just so that it doesn't rub against the material that it's against. Once I have my purse feet installed, I'm then going to attach my foam. And if you're using, say, Decoville Light or something else, you'll attach it per the manufacturer's instructions. If you're using a fusible foam, you can fuse it 
per your manufacturer's instructions. I'm using a basted foam, so I'm just going to baste all around the four edges to hold this in place. So it's the same thing I did on my, this is pattern piece H, so on my exterior and lining side gusset. So it's the same thing I did, I just basted it to my foam. So I'm just going to baste this on camera so you can see how I do that. So I use a longer stitch length. And basting is just all around the edge within the seam allowance. And it doesn't have to be super straight. You can be kind of a little bit wavy as long as you stay within that seam allowance. So I always backstitch and then I just sew along those four edges or however many edges your pattern piece has. And I'm just using a thread that matches this material. No particular reason, just because I have a lot of this thread rather than using a colorful thread. I like to save my colored threads for when I sew my actual bag. So sometimes I'll use a white thread for basting, sometimes I'll use a black thread, or in this case I'm using a beige thread. So now it's basted and I still have all my center marks. Now I'm going to return my stitch length back to the stitch length I like to use when I'm stitching and I'm going to pause the camera and change my threads because this is not the thread color I'm going to use when I stitch my bag. So I'm just going to pause the camera and I'll be right back after I've changed my thread. Alright, so I've changed my thread. Now I just want to discuss some more about the interfacing. So you do need to attach an interfacing to your H pieces, so I have already gone ahead and done that, and it was the same way I showed you for that base stabilizer. And I've also made sure to have my centers marked, which I didn't mark down here, they're on the, the actual pattern piece itself, so I'll fix that after. And then there is also some interfacing you need to fuse to your main zipper closure L. So you'll want to go ahead and fuse that, and it's just to two of the pieces that you're fusing it to. So go ahead and do that as well and then we're going to start making our handles. And for your handles you need your two pieces so you have your top P and your bottom Q pieces. And I'm going to show you with one of them. I'm just going to move these out of the way. So on both all four pieces, you need to make a mark down the entire length of the strap in the center. So find the center and make the mark the entire length of the strap. I did this for this one, which is my quilting cotton, so I'm using faux leather here and quilting cotton here. So for the quilting cotton, I made the mark down the entire length of the strap. Once I did that, I pressed the long edges in to meet that center mark. And then I gave it a really good press. And I also like to use a little bit of spritz of water. I don't put water in my iron. Normally I would say steam, but I don't put water in my iron. So I just have a water bottle that I spray everything with. And I find that gives a really nice crisp press. I had forgotten to do this for a really long time. I used to do it and then I just stopped. Just laziness really is what it was, trying to make things faster. Now I do it again and I'm not going to stop doing it because I do really like how it is. It gives a really nice crisp press and I use this method when I'm pressing zipper pockets or anything that needs a really good crisp press. So again, I've pressed the long edges into the center and then I pressed it with my iron. However, I'm using a material here that cannot be pressed with an iron. So I need to use either a washable glue stick and then fold those long edges into the center and allow it to dry. So when I do that, what I do is I press them into the center, I put my cutting mat on top and some heavy stuff on top of it, and I leave them overnight for that glue to dry. But I'm going to use double-sided tape for this tutorial. So I'm going to take some double-sided tape and place it all the way down the strap on both sides of that line. And if you have a thicker double-sided tape, you can just put it right down the center because when we put the long edges in to meet the center, the tape will be in the center and both the long edges will touch that double-sided tape. So if you've got one that's thicker, definitely use the thicker double-sided tape. I like to try and save my thicker double-sided tape for other things if I ever need it. I should really use it for the strap though because I do use a lot of this thinner tape. 
So now I have that on one side. I'm removing the paper backing. And then what I do here is I take the long edge and I just simply press it into the center all the way down the entire length of the strap. And then I'm going to repeat that for the second side. Now to the second side, remove the paper backing, again press the short edge over, or the long edges over, sorry, in to meet the center, and I have them touch for these kind of straps, the center touches, I make sure it's touching well, in the center. If I was folding this in half again, I would leave about a sixteenth of an inch gap if I was going to be folding this like this, but we're not, so I have it touch right in the center. So all the way down the entire length of the strap, I'm just pushing it into the center, making sure the centers touch, and I also like to make sure my short edges are lined up. That's really important if you're not having this sewn into a seam. This one's going to be sewn into a seam, so if it's a little bit off, it's okay. But if it is off, you can also just trim it so that it is the same. So that is your handle now folded into the center. We have our top handle and our bottom handle that are both folded into the center. We now need to take these and lay the top handle on top of the bottom handle and I cut mine a little too long, so I'm going to adjust that when I'm done sewing it so that the handle is the same length. So to do this, putting this one, and when you're putting them together, you're putting them with the folds, so where we folded it in to meet each other, into the middle, so they're touching each other. So you just see pretty sides on both sides. So with my double-sided tape, and I'm using my thicker one here. I'm going to place this down the entire length of the strap. And I try to keep it centered just so I don't sew over it. I don't have problems with my needle really getting gummed up or anything, but I just like to make sure it's centered. So that's what I mean about using a thicker, oops, the tape sticks to me. That's what I meant about using a thicker in width um, double-sided tape. See how wide that is? That'll hold that uh, when you fold your long edges. Sorry, I'm trying to think about what I was saying. When you fold your long edges in, it would, meet, it would be able to touch them. So now I'm going to lay the top on top of the bottom. Again, the edges that are pressed in the middle are going to be touching each other. So your pretty sides are both facing up. So we're going to center this, lining up my bottom short edge first, and we're going to center this as best we can onto the bottom handle. And I apologize if I keep calling this strap. It's not on purpose. I do film a lot of tutorials and sometimes they're called straps, so it just gets stuck in my head. So I'm just going to make sure that I've cut these to the same length, which I did. So I'm going to trim that on the end, the end that I cut a little bit too long on my vinyl. I don't need that there, so I'm just trimming it just like that. So now I have this in the center, and if you don't find it's quite centered as much as you want it to be, like it doesn't look as straight or as even as you want it to be, go ahead and make some adjustments. Now we need to top stitch these long edges on the handle P piece. So from the edge of the handle P, not the bottom edge, the edge of the handle P. So when I'm stitching, I'm going to be stitching 
from this edge. My seam allowance will be from the edge of my red over, not the edge of my beige. So I'm going to do the two rows of stitching on the handle. And that's what the seam allowance she gives in the pattern. So I increase my stitch length when I stitch a handle. And if you don't like a longer stitch length for your handle, you can definitely leave it at a shorter stitch length. Remember what stitch length you used for this though, because you will need to use this stitch length again later. So if you have to take a pen and paper and quickly write it down or use a removable pen like on your machine, like something that you can wipe off, go ahead and do that, like a Crayola washable marker, just so you remember what stitch length you use for these handles. one side now I'm going to and you can see my stitching I used red thread on the other side I like how it looks I like the contrast that it gives to sew the second row of stitching but first I'm going to cut these threads because I don't want them getting caught in my stitching that I'm going to do now so I'm just trimming all my threads down it also helps for peekaboo threads you don't I don't want to have peekaboo threads later and that's threads that poke up through the seams after now we need to sew this with the next seam allowance and I like to try and do this where I don't stop as much because sometimes I find when I stop that's where I tend to get a little bit squiggly so I, as you notice I try to hold my handle nice and flat on my bed of my machine and guide it that way and just go just go keep going don't stop sewing if I need to stop I will but you can go as slow as you want, but just try to keep going and don't stop if you can prevent it. So just like this. And I just personally find I get a nicer stitching when I don't stop. It looks more consistent, not so wavy, if that makes sense. So you'll notice that it doesn't look as wavy and I just find that that just that just helps that little bit so obviously in the beginning you go a little bit slower and then near the end you do just try to be careful and hold your fabric as straight as you can threads so trim them all and that is how our handle looks so we have the two rows of stitching hope you can see that on both sides I'm pretty sure you can because it's red on both sides it's beautiful I love how it looks it's going to be a nice contrast when this is on the bag you're going to see the stitching on both sides so I'm going to go and make the second handle then we'll come back and we will go into how to attach these to the bag okay so I finished both of my handles as you can see they both have the top stitching so double top stitching on both now we need to put one to the side and we need to grab our exterior panel A piece and it's important to mark the tops and bottoms of all your pieces as well. So I've already gone ahead and done that. 
and there's a mark you need to make on the right side so from the right side over and the measurement is given in the pattern so you'll want to go ahead and make that mark then you're going to place your handle at that mark so here's my mark right here I'm placing the handle to the side of the mark so the handle is going to the left of the mark so my space is between here now you can use some double-sided tape to help hold this in place or some clips I'm going to put a little bit of double-sided tape just to help hold it in place. And there is a measurement in the pattern for where we're going to start and stop sewing. You'll want to make note of that too so that you don't put your double-sided tape if you're doing what I'm doing over or past that mark, sorry. So I'm just going to peel it back a little bit so it stays within the mark. There we go. So I'm lining up the raw bottom edge of the handle with the raw bottom edge of the exterior A panel. I wanted to make sure I was calling it the correct name. And when you're placing this handle, as you've noticed, I'm placing it so the top A handle piece is facing up. So my red fabric is facing up. So whatever you've put on the top, your top A piece will be facing up, not the bottom piece just like that. Now as I was mentioning there is a mark that you need to make from the top down onto the handle and this is an important mark because that's where we're going to stop sewing and we're going to stitch across and back down. So what we'll do is sew up directly on top of those stitches we made when we top stitched our handle across at that line and back down and that's why I said make note of the stitch length you used when you stitched your handles because we're going to be stitching right on top of those stitches. So I'm going to stitch right on top of those stitches that I made previously. And I'm at that mark I made so I'm going to stitch right across that mark. And then back down on top of my previous stitches and I'm going to come in just on the edge here and I'm just stitching across the edge so I don't have to back stitch and I'm stitching right up those same stitches and I'm stopping just shy of the stitches that I made previously so that I come under so it looks like there's two stitches one under the other across and then back down and then I'll back stitch so you can see on the back here how I stitched it's a little bit easier because that's white so I went up across back down then I came across down here back up across and back down and I stitched right on top of my previous stitches and that's kind of the nice thing about the red thread is that if it wasn't directly on top of my previous stitches it won't show so much it just blends in and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to erase that chalk line I made I use that triangle chalk and I find it really really makes a mark and it's a little bit hard to get off so that's how that looks now we need to put this to the side so you're just attaching the handle just like that for now we need to put this to the side and we need to grab your exterior front bottom right piece C so I need to find C so there's C we need our zipper for as I call it our front zipper pocket so our zipper for our front zipper pocket And I'm just going to grab the pocket piece that we need for this as well. So our pocket G piece. So I'm just going to have this ready because I am going to need that. So starting with the front zipper and the exterior right bottom C piece. Sometimes this painter's tape doesn't stick and sometimes it does. So we need to take the zipper and we need to lay it on top of this exterior 
right bottom C piece and we're going to place the zipper so it is right side down with the zipper pull to the left. Now, depending on how you like to carry your bag, you may want to change this. So when I wear my bag, I like my zippers to be closing to the right when I open and close them. So I'm going to actually flip my zipper over and have it close to the right. It's just a personal preference. That's just because, like I said, when I wear my bags, I like to have the easier access of getting into the pocket. I don't wanna take my bag off. I wanna be able to wear my bag on my shoulder and just maneuver it. I can't do it with my left hand because my left hand is the hand I use for my cane. So it's just one handed for me, it makes it really easy. So I'm going to actually flip my zipper just for this tutorial. That's just a note I wanted to make, but you would normally following the pattern have the zipper closing to the left. So I'm going to line this up and I did make a center mark on my C piece. So what I'm going to do is grab my pencil and I'm going to make a center mark on my zipper as well. And I'm going to line it up. So I'm making a mark on my zipper just within the seam allowance with my pencil. And then I'll just use these center marks to line everything up. If you want, you can use some double-sided tape here to help hold this in place. I'm just going to use my clips and then I'm going to sew, whew, sew right across that edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So just sewing this edge here and when you approach your zipper, zipper pull, move it out of the way because if you keep sewing past it, you may hit it, but also where the zipper pull is kind of creates a bump so that the zipper tape kind of goes like that where the zipper pull is. So you want to move it out of the way so you keep a nice, straight, and even zipper tape onto your pattern piece. So sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to return your stitch length back to the length you, you use for uh, sewing a bag together. So keeping the zipper tape nice and straight. I just moved my zipper pull out of the way. And my thread is right there. I'm going to cut my thread. And you'll notice my tape is a little bit, my zipper tape is a little bit longer than my pattern piece. And that's just because I tend to cut them sometimes just a wee bit longer, just to make sure I can have enough room for my zipper. So now we need to take that exterior front zipper pocket lining piece G and we need to place it on top of this. So the lining G piece is going to go right sides down against the wrong side of the zipper and the pretty sides of the two pieces, so G and C, are going to be touching. You're going to line up your edges or your sides And if you have a center mark, I put the center mark on the wrong end here. If you have a center mark, line up your center marks. Pin it all the way across. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And for this seam, I need to switch out to my zipper foot. There is also a note in the pattern for different sizes of zippers you're using. You'll use a different stitch length. So if you're using a number three zipper, you'll use a different uh, seam allowance length than if you're using a number 4.5 or a number five zipper. So you'll want to make note of that. So here's where my zipper head is, so I'm going to zip it out of the way. Just like that. And now we're going to trim all our little peekaboo threads. We're going to take this panel, press it away from the zipper, and then I just like to give it a finger press. 
flip it so the wrong sides are touching and then give this a press and you can take this to your iron to press it if you prefer I'm just giving it a finger press just like that or if you have a seam roller you can use a seam roller I'm going to switch back to my foot I was using and I'm just keeping my Teflon foot on my bay on my machine because I'm using faux leather as well so I'm just going to put my Teflon foot back on this way here I don't have to change up my presser feet so much now I'm going to top stitch this seam here so the seam right here all the way across and when I'm approaching where the zipper pull is I do the same thing move it out of the way don't want to hit that zipper pull. I turn my stitch length back to the length I use, slide my zipper closed. If you're worried about your zipper coming off your zipper tape, you can stitch on the ends of the zipper, just back stitch over it a couple times and that'll help hold your zipper pull from coming off the ends because we do move it around a lot. Now we need to fold the bottom edge of the exterior front pocket G piece right sides together so flip your panel over you're going to put it right sides together with each other but this bottom piece of the G is going to line up with the top of the zipper here that had nothing attached to it so once again I have it on this side I'm taking the bottom of G I'm trying to find on the camera bottom of G and I'm folding it up to this top edge of the zipper that has nothing attached and I'm going to pin it in place and I want to make sure that my sides all line up as I'm pinning it. So your side edges here all line up and if they're off a little bit don't panic too much that'll be hidden in the seams when we sew the bag together. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to pin this and sew it with the seam allowance given in the pattern and again move that zipper pull or zipper head out of the way while you're sewing that. So there's my zipper pull, I'm just sliding it out of the way. your threads and there we go we're having the beginnings of a pocket or we do have a pocket it's just it has holes in the side but you can see there's our pocket that's our front pocket and I like it because it'll be big enough for a phone now we need our middle B piece so it's called exterior front middle so B piece it'll look like this and we need to place this so it is pretty sides down, you're looking at the wrong sides, against that top of the zipper tape that we just attached the bottom of the pocket to. So right along this edge here, we're going to pin that in place. So line up your side edges. So all these side edges, line them all up. And then sew that using the seam allowance given in the pattern and again, Pay special attention to the seam allowance that you use for the size of zipper you're using. So I'm just going to sew that in place. pull out of the way change back to my Teflon foot because now we're going to press this and then top stitch so now we're going to press this top our front middle B panel up so that seam allowance is under this middle B panel piece 
and I can't take this to my iron because I did use a material that cannot be pressed with the iron so I'm just pressing it with my hand. So now I'm going to top stitch this seam using the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> And again, when you get near that zipper pull, just slide it out of the way. Making sure your seam stays pressed down and that your pocket as well is not in the way. You wanna make sure everything that needs to be under the presser foot is only under the presser foot. So it's just that seam and this top B panel here. You don't want the zipper pocket under there. So there it is, that's how that looks so far. Now we're going to baste the side edges. So I'm just going to add some clips. And then once we have it basted, we'll trim any excess zipper tape or any of the material from around the side because you do have a curve here. So you may need to trim at the curve. So baste down and I'm just starting over my zipper tape. And for basting, again, I just use a longer stitch length, so I'm leaving it at my top stitching length. <clears throat> Trim my threads because I don't want them to peek through after. That you get I trim that off too which we'll be trimming off when we trim down our sides so I'm going to trim my zipper now so that it is even with those panels and I'm just using my zipper scissors for that and then I'm going to trim the sides here so just this corner edge and then any fraying that I have. And there we have our front with our zipper pocket attached so far. We're going to move on and we're going to attach our handle piece to this now. All right, so now we're going to take that top that I mentioned, top A piece that we have that has the handle attached to it, and we need to attach it to the top of this B piece here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the front top right A with the handle that is attached to it and place it so it is pretty sides touching the pretty sides of B piece. I had to look to see what the piece was. And you're going to line up the sides and if you have center marks, you can line up your center marks as well. Make sure your handle isn't getting all bunched up underneath. You want to keep it nice and flat. You don't want the other piece of the handle up, coming up through here. <clears throat> Pin it all the way across, and then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget if you've used a top stitch length for previous stitching, to return that back to your stitch length for constructing a bag. Trim your threads. And now we're going to flip this top exterior we just stitched up. Press it up and then take that. So I just like to press it so that this gets this pressed and then take it and you want to press this seam towards the B piece. Now I'm using a material that I can't press so I'm just pressing it 
with my fingers. However, you can also use some double-sided tape back here to help hold that seam down if you prefer. Whatever is going to make it easier for you. Or use a rolling seam roller and press that seam down. Just like that. Just trying to really get it to press down. There we go. So now we're going to top stitch this seam using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Just be careful with your handle, don't have it under your presser foot, that loose end, move it out of the way. And make sure you keep that seam pressed down towards your B panel. Take your time for this, keeping that seam pressed under the B panel. And that's how that looks. Now we have the top with the handle. Now, moving on, we need to grab our E piece. So that's this piece here. Looks like this. And there's a mark that you need to make on the E piece from the left side. So going from the left side over, you need to make a mark. And I've already gone ahead and made the mark, but I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to check with my ruler to make sure that it is accurate. I did mark a T, but I want to make sure when I did this measurement, I didn't accidentally move my, um, turn this the wrong way or anything. So I'm going to go check and I will come back. All right, so I've checked my measurement. All is good. So again, measure over from the left side and we're going to pin our handle. So what I'm doing is I'm just placing these two pieces side by side. And we need to stick our handle to this piece and make sure that the handle is not twisted once we get it stuck down. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape again for this, just like I did the previous step when we attached the handle. Now, there is a mark on the handle that you need to make once you get this attached. So I've already made that mark and I'm just keeping my double-sided tape within that marking. I don't want it to come up so that when you see when it's attached, you see the tape here. I don't want to have the tape anywhere on the back of my piece. So again, now I'm going to make sure my handle isn't twisted. So I'm just laying it like that. And I'm going to line up this bottom raw edge with the bottom raw edge of this E piece. And it's a little bit hard to see once I get this on. I can see it better this way because there's no shadows. So the measurement is over to the edge of my handle here. And I feel like this is crooked. So I'm just going to pause the camera, get my ruler and make sure it's nice and straight. All right. So I was good. It's just the shadowing and the way this is sort of bent a bit here. It's kind of playing tricks on my eyes. So now we're going to do the same thing we did with this side of the handle. Stitch up your stitching, your top stitching you did on your bag. So get your stitch length to the length you used for that. Stitch across that line that you've made down from the top on your handle, down, and then back up the second line of stitching. Take your time to go slow. a bit awkward because it's attached to that other panel but just take your time to trim all our threads and so see that's how I did it I went up across down 
across this edge, back up that top stitching, across, and back down. So I left that little gap just like I did on that one. So making sure my handle is not twisted. So I'm laying this on the, the table just like this because I want to make sure that that's not twisted. I'm now going to take exterior piece F. That's the one that looks like this. This is the one that in the beginning of the video I was saying when you cut your interfacing, you need to make sure it's tacky side up with the pattern piece with the, the letters or words facing you. Now we're going to take this and we're going to place it so it is pretty sides against the handle and pattern piece E. We're going to pin them across that straight edge and then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> so just along this short straight edge here. And where the handles are, I'm just going to go back over them just for some extra security. I forgot to do that on that side. I meant to, but I forgot. So that's how that looks right now. Now we're going to flip F down. And we need to top stitch along this edge here. So press it, give it a really good pressing. If you're using a material that you can iron, definitely iron this and give it a really good press. <clears throat> We're going to top stitch this seam. Just like that. So again, making sure my handle isn't twisted, now we have the two pieces, but now we have to put these together. So we're going to take panel E, F, and flip it so it's pretty sides touching this panel A, B, and C. And we're going to pin it at the tops, then the bottom, and then the rest of the way. Now we're going to sew this seam allowance as given in the instructions. So use the measurement given in the instructions and try matching, it says, the top stitching here. So try matching up your top stitching so it looks like one even seam. So my top stitching, so I'm paying special attention to this seam here where we attached E to F and A to B. So you want to pay special attention. This is made as a note in the pattern. And that way there, when you open it up, it'll look like your top stitching and this seam is all one seam. It goes straight across. So I'm just using a bunch of clips there to hold it in place. So now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> Make sure nothing is in the way here, that everything that's supposed to be under the presser foot is only under the presser foot, so your handle, you don't want to get accidentally caught up under this. And I'm just going to leave my clip, but I'm going to move it just ever so slightly out of the way so that it holds this all in place for me. There we go. While I went over that seam where I wanted everything to stay connected. And I feel like I veered a little bit here because my one of my clips got caught. So I'm just going to stitch back over this seam.
So see how the seam runs straight across and my top stitching is one line? That's what you want. Now we're going to press this edge and we're going to top stitch it using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, if you've used a material you can't press, use your seam roller. You can take it to your iron if you can, press your material. You can also use some basting tape or double-sided tape. Oh, I ran out of thread, bobbin thread, so I gotta go back and re-sew that. You can use some basting tape here. So I'm going to fill up my bobbin and then I'm going to come back and we will continue with sewing our, or top stitching our front panel here. All right, so bobbin is now filled. I can now top stitch this edge that we've pressed here. Now this is where it's going to be a little bit tricky for you probably because you have this handle. So I like to just slip my handle under my presser foot like that and then it's out of my way. Oops. <clears throat> so top stitch all along that edge. And there is a bit of bulk there, so if your machine struggles and is skipping stitches, or you know it will, try switching to a bigger needle, and maybe even using a walking foot might be helpful. Definitely pick materials that you know your machine will be able to sew and won't struggle with when you get to the bulky areas. So I just clipped all my threads. So there it is, we have all our beautiful top stitching done on all our panels and down the sides. Now we're done with this panel, we're going to move on to making the exterior panel. So I'm going to put this to the side and we'll make our exterior panel. And the exterior panel construction is literally the exact same. The only thing is we're not adding this zipper pocket. So let's put this to the side and make that back panel. So for this, I'm just going to grab all the pieces I need to do this. So my handle, A, B, E, F, and then this one is called D. So you want to make sure you have all those pieces. So starting with your, just put that to the side, starting with your panel A piece. Again, you need to make a mark from the right hand side over, and there's a measurement given in the pattern for that. I'm going to add a little bit of tape to the back of my handle and I'm going to stick it down to my panel A piece. And just like the last time, there is a mark, whoops, on the, this tape likes to stick to me. There is a mark on the handle that you're going to make from the top of the panel A piece down. And those are going to be your sewing lines. Or that, sorry, not those. So you'll make a mark from the top of this A panel down onto your handle here. I've already gone ahead and done that. So now I'm going to stitch this. So on top of my previous stitching, so right on top of that previous top stitching, across at that line I made, back down, and then up and back down the second top stitching. across that line and if when you're getting to this side here and you you find that your stitch length is a little bit too long that you're not going to stop right in the previous top stitching take a smaller stitch length so adjust your stitch length to be smaller so that you do end up right in that previous top stitching <clears throat> so back up that next row of top stitching and I'm just going to stop under it using that same seam allowance. So there it is, it's all stitched. Now we're going to attach the B panel 
to our D panel. So remember there was a zipper here on the previous one. This one doesn't have the zipper, so we're just going to attach B right directly to D, so pretty sides touching. And we'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So line up your sides and then pin the rest of the way. So now we're going to pin that top straight edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And as I always say, don't forget to return your stitch length back to the stitch length you use for constructing bags. And I know I'm going to top stitch next because we're going to flip this panel Oops, oops, my scissors weren't sticking. We're going to push this panel so that the middle is, the seam allowance is going up towards this middle B panel. That thread doesn't want to go away. So just like that. So we're just pressing it. Just like that. And now we're going to top stitch this panel. So top stitching on the B piece and make sure that seam allowance is up towards the B. your little threads so you don't get peekaboo threads later. Return your stitch length back to your length you use for stitching. Now we're going to place this piece with the handle on it right sides together with B. So A and B are going right sides together so right now we're seeing the wrong side of B and A and B are pretty sides touching. So, pin it all the way across, and then sew this as well with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So the only thing different here is that we didn't put in a zipper pocket. However, I wanted to note, if you wanted to add a zipper pocket to the back side, when you're cutting, you would cut all your pieces that we used for, for the zipper pocket twice, and you wouldn't cut these back pieces so you would cut C twice and you wouldn't cut D at all. That's if you wanted to have a pocket on the front and the back of your bag. I love pockets. Sometimes I like to have lots of extra pockets so maybe the next time I make this I might make it where I have this pocket whoops, on the front and back of my bag just because I do like to have lots of pockets. So now that we have that we're going to press this And I'm just pressing it that way, but we need to press it so it is down towards the B panel. So your seam, just like we did last time, is going down towards B. So the seam is in here. So if you look here, my seam is down. And again, if you've used a material that you can press with your iron, go ahead and press this with your iron. <clears throat> now we're going to top stitch this panel all, oops, all the way across and be careful that that handle doesn't get under your presser foot. Keep everything nice and flat. And before I forget, I'm going to return my stitch length back to the stitch length I use for stitching a bag. There's that side. Now we need to attach this part of the handle again to E. So that's this small little piece here and I'm just looking to see where my top is. So that's my top. And remember we make a mark that comes in from the left side over. So I've already gone ahead and made that mark. <clears throat> and I'm just putting some double sided tape on the back of my handle just to help hold it in place while I sew. If you'd rather just use clips, feel free to do that. I can't use pins because of the material I'm using. So I'm lining up this bottom raw edge of the handle 
with the bottom edge of my E piece, also making sure my handle isn't twisted. So I lay this, I'm just gonna move these over. I lay this so this is right sides up and I lay this right sides up and make sure my handle isn't twisted. Line up that bottom raw edge. And then you need to make a mark again on your handle that goes from the top here down, which I've already done. But if you haven't, go ahead and make that mark and we're going to repeat what we did there. Up the one top stitching, across at that line, back down. Second top stitching, across and back down. So return your stitch length back to the length you used for that top stitching. And I wanted to give another little tip. If you're worried about angled stitches, reduce your stitch length to zero, take one stitch, return your stitch length back to the length you're using, turn the corner, and stitch all the way until you get to that second corner. And what this does, so I'll do it again, zero stitch length, one stitch, stitch length back to the length I used. What that does is it makes one extra stitch which locks in the stitch in the corner and I don't get those angled stitches in the corner because sometimes that does happen. And I'll do that anywhere that I have stitches that I turn a corner where I know that corner is going to be seen, of course. So if it's going to be in a seam allowance like here, I'm not concerned about it. But I do that on zipper pockets even. So anywhere that stitching where you have to turn a corner is going to be seen, that's where I'll do that. So I should have did it there. I think, I don't know, it's hard to see right now. No, it's okay. It looks like it went on an angle, but it's okay. Return your stitch length back to the length you use. Make sure your panel is not twisted. So leaving it like that. And you can leave the clips there if you have them on your handle at the top. I'm just going to leave them for now. Now we need to attach panel F to panel E. Same thing we did previously. Place it so it's like this. I like to lay it so everything's facing right sides up. Flip it so it's pretty sides against the pretty side of panel E. Line up the side edges. <clears throat> and then we're going to stitch this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to have your stitch length at the length you like to use for when you're constructing a bag. And here at the handle, I'm doing the same thing I've done the last few times. I missed it the first time, but just going across it, just for some extra security, trim all my threads, which I can't find them. Then laying this again, right sides up, we're going to flip it and press the seam allowance down towards the F piece. And then see, you can see that these line up. That's how you know you have accurate seam allowances when everything is the same size. Press that. Again, you're pressing the seam down towards the F panel. And then top stitch this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm just going to throw that through there so that it's not dangling down and pulling. Clip the peekaboo threads. Return your stitch length. And now see how my handle is twisted? I want to untwist that. So I'm just going to flip this until everything's all untwisted. Now we need to attach panel E, F to A, B, and C. So same thing as we did previously, flip it and using your clips, line up the seam where A and, and B meet and where E and F meet so that your top stitching and your seam is one continuous seam. And you can flip it open and see that it's continuous. If it's not, maneuver it around, shift it around to get it so that it is lined up. Lots of clips here, line up the bottom, 
and then continue clipping the rest of the way. So we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. to make sure it stays together. So I've just got the clips there. Didn't really move it until it was right at it. And just because I did that on the other pattern piece, I'm going to do it here where I'm going to stitch over that seam again, just for some extra security and to make sure that it's nice and straight. helps make sure that I ended up with a nice and straight seam allowance. Press this seam allowance towards the 8E piece. I forgot to clip that thread. And you can see already that my seams here line up and my top stitching lines up beautifully. So press that seam over to the EF piece and then give it a press. And I got to figure out how to get that mark off from that chalk I used. I'm just giving this a wiping. I might have to take a damp cloth to it later just to make sure it's gone. So now I'm going to top stitch on top of that FE piece because that's where the seam is pressed towards. And again, as I mentioned previously, I just tuck my handle under so that I can top stitch this. all the way down. And you do have a bit of bulk here, so just take your time. Use a bigger needle if you need to. A walking foot as well, that can be helpful. Trim all your threads. And there is your back panel completed and your front panel completed. So when we put them like this, the back and front of the bag, it's a beautiful bag. I love this design and I love the size of the bag. Now we're going to move on to, oh, attach our foam. Now we need to do that. So it's the same manner in which we attached the foam to our sides and our bottom. <clears throat> I'm just going to take my lint brush and get off any of the little pieces here that I don't want stuck. That's just from when I was cutting all my other materials. The little pieces are cut. I'm not worried about those threads so much. So we're going to lay this so it is right sides up on our foam. And if you have basting spray, you can use a basting spray for this step and just baste it with your basting spray. Sometimes I like to use a basting spray and baste it as well, which you know what, I'm gonna go off camera and I'm going to baste this with the basting spray. And then I won't go on camera to baste it all around. I don't feel you need to sit and watch that. We already did that with the bottom, but I'll baste all around these these edges and I'll repeat that for the second side as well. So I'm going to go do that and then we'll come back. And don't forget when you're basting, just as a side note, to move this handle out of the way. You don't want to stitch over your handle, so make sure it's moved out of the way. You can open up your pocket and maybe just tuck it in in the pocket on this one and then on the other one just fold it out of the way. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll come back and we will continue on. All right, so I have basted my foam to my two exterior panels, so the back and the front. Now we need to install some rivets. If you don't have rivets, that's okay. You don't need to add them. You can also add Chicago screws. 
So I'm going to go install my rivets and there's measurements in the pattern that you need to use to install your rivets. So I'm going to go and install those rivets. I'll do this off camera and then I will come back. You can also install a name tag or a name plate or anything else that you want here anywhere on your bag. So you can put it at the bottom in the bottom corner over here, wherever you want in the center between the handles, anywhere. Even right here, you might be able to get a little tag right there as well. Choice is really yours. So I'm going to go install my rivets and then come back and we will continue on. All right, so I have installed my rivets. So rivets here and here. And I also installed a bag tag. And I put some duct tape over the prongs just to hold it in place. Now, when I installed my rivets and my bag tag here, where I cut holes, I use some fray stop over the holes just to prevent it from fraying. Just a little extra measure for security. And also I forgot to mention, but when you're basting your main panel to your foam, sorry, that's falling. When you're basting your main panel to your foam, make sure your front zipper is tucked out of the way or zipped out of the way so you don't accidentally hit it when you're sewing or basting your foam to your main panels. So we're gonna put these to the side. We're done with them for now. And we're going to move on to making our lining zipper pocket and for this we need the pieces that are lining k we need the two n pieces which are your zipper pocket pieces and we need our zipper pocket facing piece m so moving that to the side we're starting with our facing and for our facing we need to create a box on the facing with the measurements given in the pattern. So you'll want to go ahead and refer to the pattern and make those marks on your facing and it'll look just like this when you're done. So you'll have a box in it. And you'll also have a line in the center with these going into each corner. I didn't do that because I'm kind of a rebel and I just cut and cut it and without following any lines. I'm kind of a rebel, so I just do it that way. It all works out the same. And I'm just giving this a press in half now because I know I'll need to do that after. Now we need to make our zipper pocket. So we need both of those zipper pocket end pieces and we need our zipper pocket zipper. So that is this piece. And for this, it's going to seem a little bit wonky if you've never done a zipper, this zipper pocket this way before or installed a zipper this way. It's gonna seem a little bit wonky, but trust me, it works out. You need to take your zipper and place it on the top edge of pocket zipper pocket end piece, and you're placing your zipper so it is right sides up. Your pocket piece is also right sides up, so it's the wrong side of the zipper against the end piece. So the zipper pocket end piece. Clip it all the way across that edge, and then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So sew straight all the way across. Make sure your stitch length is at the length you use for stitching. And sew all the way across that zipper pocket. Tape and zipper pocket end piece. I'm at my zipper pull, so I'm sliding it out of the way because remember you get that little lump from the zipper head, or zipper pull, sorry. Clip my um, threads, I think about the word there for a second. And then we're going to take this and press this. I'm just pressing it down, just like that. So now we have that pressed right now, which is in another step, but I just do give it a press now. Now we need to take the remaining zipper pocket end piece and we need to place our zipper again, right sides up against the right, the right sides of the pocket up and the zipper right side up. So the wrong side of the zipper is going to be against the pretty side of your fabric. And I like to also make sure that these edges of the zipper pocket are all lined up with each other so that your sides all line up here, these sides, and I clip it in place. And then I pin all the way across. And then I will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. There's my zipper. 
zipper pull. I'm just going to zip that out of the way. Trim my peekaboo thread. Zip your zipper closed. Now we're going to press the panels away from the zipper. So right now I'm looking at the wrong side of my zipper, so I'm pressing my panels away from the zipper. And you can take this to your iron and give it a press. I just finger press it. So as you can see, when you're looking at the right side of your zipper, you're seeing the wrong side of your panels. And if that's how it looks, it's correct because when you look into the zipper pocket, you're seeing the pretty side of the fabric. And again, same thing I mentioned previously, if you're worried about your zipper coming off your tape, just stitch back and forth over the teeth on the ends here, and that will help prevent it from falling off or coming off your zipper tape. Now we need to put this to the side, and we need to take our lining K bottom piece here, and I need to find my M piece again. And you need to make a mark down from the top for where this facing is going to go. So make that mark. Then fold your panel in half because we're going to place the zipper facing pretty sides together with the lining right at that line. So my line is here, the top edge of my facing is right along that line I drew. And it is centered right with the creases. So the crease on M is centered with the crease on my lining. Use some pins to hold it in place. Once you have your pins pinned, or once you have your, <laughs> goodness, once you have your facing pinned, wow, once you have your facing pinned, we're now going to stitch around this box and I like to use just a slightly shorter stitch length just to make it so that you get a really nice box that's been stitched, starting in the first corner, and then back stitch, and then stitch all the way around that box. Just removing those pins so that when I come back around they don't poke me. So I'm back at that end and I'm going to take a zero stitch length like I was uh, mentioning when we were stitching those handles in these corners because I really don't want angled stitches here. any angled stitches because I really want a really nice cor uh, corners for my pockets. Now we need to cut down the center line if you had made that center line. So I'm just going to use my seam ripper to get it started. And then I use my scissors to cut all the way to the tip of where your V's will be in these corners. And be careful not to clip your stitches. However, be very careful, however, if you're very careful and you still clip your stitches, it's okay not to worry. There's an easy fix for this because I've done it many times. What you'll do is say you clipped in this corner here. You'll come back, you'll back stitch over here, stitch all the way across, up that short side and back over here and back stitch. And that'll just lock the stitches in that were snipped, but it'll also help re-stitch those corners. So I'm just giving this a press because we're going to push this through the park pocket opening. So I'm just finger pressing all the edges. This is also where I find out if I accidentally snipped any of my stitches. So I just check them as I'm going along and they are good. And I need to get rid of this chalk line. I 
have like an eraser like what we had when we were in elementary school and the teachers would write on the chalkboard and they'd use those erasers, the chalk erasers. You should have something like that for fabric. Or maybe they do and I just don't know it. So now I'm going to take this and push this through to the wrong side and I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to give it a really good press to get this pocket opening nice and flat. So I'm going to go do that, then I'll come back and we will continue on. So now I've pressed that pocket so it's nice and flat and I did what I said that I did with my handles which is I spray it with some water to get a really nice pressed flat pocket opening. When you're pressing, make sure you get these corners nice and flat, as nice and flat as possible so you don't get puckers in your corners. Now we need to grab back our zipper pocket and we're going to put this into the zipper pocket opening. So what I like to do is use some double sided tape on my zipper. And one other thing before we move on, on your lining if you want to really help hold this flat you can use some double sided tape on the back of the um, facing. This way here that will also help hold your facing super flat. You can even use a glue stick and then take your iron if your material here and your facing are materials that you can press with your iron, take a glue stick, run the glue stick along, and then press it down, and that'll help hold it flat. So back to the zipper pocket. We're going to place some double-sided tape along the edges of the zipper. So this is our zipper pocket N pieces with the zipper in the center. Add some double-sided tape. You can even use glue and just press it with your iron to dry it. Remove the double-sided tape paper backing. And we're going to place this so that it is inside the zipper hole and you want it centered and you want the pull facing to the left but remember again I like my pulls facing to the right so when I'm using my bag or wearing my bag it is against me um, or going to the right to be able to open from my arm and because I like my zipper pockets on the back that's also something I need to take into consideration is where I like my zipper pockets to be on my bag. Now. On this bag, the decision to have it on the back is because the front of the bag has a pocket and sometimes I find I fill my pockets too much and they kind of like bulge each other out. So I like to put this on the back of my bag. So now I'm going to center this and you know that you can center it because if you lift your facing, it's the same length as your zipper pocket. So you can just line up your facing with your zipper pocket. And I'm going to stand to get a better view of this. So zipper pocket in the center of that zipper facing or zipper pocket facing hole center it as best you can and this may take a bit of shifting once you get it centered you can press it in place so see how these line up the edges line up press it in place and then we're going to stitch all around this box using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm just going to fix this here because it's not quite centered. There we go. Might just be because this zipper is open a bit there. So, so all the way around the entire outer edge here of this zipper pocket opening. If you don't want to backstitch it, start and stop. Leave long tails when you start. Don't backstitch. Stitch all the way around. When you get back to where you started, stop in the same hole you started in. Leave long tails, cut it off, and then pull them through and tie them off in the back. And that way there you have no backstitching. And you can do that anywhere there's back anywhere there's somewhere on your bag that you don't want any backstitching to be seen you can do that anywhere and on any bag where you don't want backstitching seen just a little tip same thing if you're worried about angled stitches in these corners when you're stitching the zipper pocket in 
Oh, and I forgot to mention your zipper pocket is laying flat and open for this step. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Make sure your zipper pocket is flat and open and it doesn't end up under your presser foot or needle. So I'm making sure everything's staying nice and flat here. stitched in place so see your zipper can't go anywhere it's stuck and like I was saying if you've left long tails you'd pull them through to the back and tie them off we're going to flip this so that we are now looking at the wrong side of the lining but the right sides of the zipper pockets bring the top one down to meet the bottom one and I'm going to add some clips just to hold it in place move your zipper out of the way so if it is a dangly zipper it's not in the way when we're going to sew these sides up now we're going to trim this pocket to the bottom pocket to be the same length as the top part of the pocket so just trim it across just like that so now you have two pieces that are the same length now we're going to fold this bottom edge up by the measurement given in the pattern. So I'm just eyeballing it here and then I'll measure after. So you're just gonna fold both those bottom edges up like that and then give it a press. So I'm going to go do that and I'll come back and we will continue on. I've pressed those up so you can see they're pressed now. I'm going to add some clips just to help hold it in place because now we're going to sew the sides of the zipper pocket here but move your lining out of the way so you're going to just sew the zipper pockets and you're going to use the seam allowance given in the pattern for this and I like to start at the top of my zipper facing I'll stitch over my my zipper a little bit I'm not super concerned about threads on this side because I'm gonna have them inside the bag. Once we're done sewing this, we'll trim our zipper if your zipper has any overhang. So you can trim your zipper if there's a lot of overhang. like that and now our zipper pocket is complete we can look down and see inside our pocket and you want that opening there so when we turn the bag right sides out now this bag does have two turning methods I'll explain that to you when we get to it or two um, finishing methods I'll explain that to you when we get to that step so here we are going to move on to our slip pocket so for this we need our remaining lining panel K piece our slip pocket O piece and our slip pocket trim which is I'm trying to find which one it is the slip pocket trim piece is O as what well, or, or sorry I'm trying to figure out what it is so you need your slip pocket trim sorry your slip pocket piece and your lining panel so first thing we're going to do, just move these out of the way, is take your slip pocket piece and fold it in half lengthwise, just like that. I pressed mine and folded it already. So now I'm just going to pin it and we're going to base stitch these raw edges together across the top. just across the top. 
and you can use a longer stitch length for this. So there's how that looks. Now we need to take our slip pocket trim piece and we need to fold it. So I'm just trying to open mine up because I pressed it. The same way we did those handles. So remember we made a line down the center, then we folded the long edges into the center. We need to do that same thing. And if you need, you can use fabric glue or double sided tape to help hold it in place. So that's what you need to do. And I went ahead and pressed mine in half one more time because we're going to be putting this over top of the basted edge here of the slip pocket. So where this center seam is, that's where the raw edge of your slip pocket will hit when you insert it in. So I'm putting the top raw edge that we stitched of the slip pocket into the slip pocket trim. And you may have used a different material for your slip pocket. You may be using your lining. I decided to go with my exterior to kind of carry the exterior through to the lining. And then you'll notice my lining is my slip pocket trim color. So just push that in to meet the center. So the edge, the raw edge of the slim pocket is up here in the center of the slip pocket trim piece. Now we're going to stitch across this edge here, right here, using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you want to make sure it's snug against that seam at the top of the, the um, slip pocket. So make sure it's nice and snug there, tucked inside. just top stitching using the seam allowance given in the pattern and there's going to be a second row of stitching that we need to make. Oops. So make that second row of stitching as well. your little threads and there it is it's stitched oops, to the slip pocket now we need to take this finished slip pocket and we need to pin it to the fit to the remaining lining piece and I'm just folding this in half because I'm going to line up my center marks. And you're going to make a mark from the top down on your remaining lining panel and that's where the top of your slip pocket piece will line up with. And I'm lining up my center marks even though the pocket is the same length as the panel. I'm still lining up those center marks just to make sure it's not wonky and I'm lining it up with this line as well. Again, making sure nothing is wonky on me. We're going to sew down the side, across the bottom, and back up the second side to sew this slip pocket in place. So down the side, across the bottom and back up the other side. And this is like a basting stitch, so if you use a slightly longer stitch length, that's okay. But at the bottom, I do suggest using your stitch length you use to construct the bag, just because this is the bottom of a pocket. lines we need to make and these are given in the pattern you can use the markings that are the measurements that are given in the pattern 
and that's what I've used and I've gone ahead and already made those marks and it makes a pen pocket in the center of the panel. needed that I need an EpiPen it's easy to find in my bag so it'll just fit right in there so I'm just going to erase my chalk marks with my sleeve that is my eraser erase the chalk marks here because once the bag is constructed I'm going to have a hard time getting in here and erasing all these chalk marks best I can do. So there it is. There is our slip pocket attached to our remaining lining panel. Put that to the side for now. Now we need, I'm trying to find the pieces where they are, our main zipper closure pieces and our main zipper closure zipper. We also need a couple of pins. So for the zipper, there are some marks that you need to make on it from the top down. So I have already gone ahead and made that mark and I'm using the continuous zipper tape. So these are the instructions for the continuous zipper tape. I do have a video tutorial on my YouTube channel, which I'll link below that goes into more instruction for how to do this and it shows it a little bit more. So I will link that below and I'll also link below how I use my handy zipper helper to get a zipper pull on a zipper tape and also to make my zipper tape a double pull zipper. So using this mark that we made on the tape you're going to pinch it the zipper at that mark so that the zipper goes wrong sides touching then you're going to take this mark and bring it so that it goes under your zipper tape so it turns the zipper teeth at a 90 degree angle. So again pinch at that mark I'm trying to get it with my hands pinch at that mark then bring the teeth so that that mark that you pinched is now under your teeth and you get like a triangle if you look at the back there's sort of like a triangle or an angled line back there depending on how short your zipper tape is on the side that's sticking out just like that I should have opened this before we're going to put a pin in just like that and then we're going to do that on the opposite end so pinch at the line and bring the teeth so that that pinched area goes under your zipper teeth so your zipper teeth go on an angle like that. Place a pin and then we're going to stitch this to hold it down in place and just be careful stitching. I go slow or I'll hand crank until I remove the pin. I'm just going to redo this side because it's not very straight. It would be in the seam, you wouldn't see it as much, but I'm just being a perfectionist. threads. You don't want any peekaboo threads. Careful not to cut your zipper tape though, like I almost just did. to stitch on the end of the zipper over it just a few times just to close, keep that closed so that your zipper pull doesn't come off the zipper tape. Also trim your threads there. And we're going to trim the zipper on the ends here. There we go. 
I've trimmed the edges of my zipper so it is even on the sides and we've had that little back stitched piece on the bottom. Now we need to grab all our main zipper closures and you're going to have two that don't have interfacing and two that do. And by interfacing, there was an extra piece of interfacing we had to put on them. So you have two with and two without. First, we're going to start with the pieces without. And you need to make a mark on both short edges in using a measurement that's given in the pattern. And for the one end, I marked it in the middle here because that's where my zipper tape is going to go. And the other end is folded in at that mark. And I did the same thing on these pieces as well. So these are my exteriors and these are going to be my linings. So in the center here, I made the mark and then I folded the short raw edges on the other end. So starting with the panels without the interfacing, so there's no interfacing on the back of these, just your regular interfacing, not the extra piece. We're going to place the zipper so that it is right sides up against the right side of that zipper closure. And line up the mark, the end of the zipper tape with the mark you made. And pin it all the way across. Once we have it pinned all the way across, we're going to baste this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So baste this in place and I'm just opening up my zipper pull so that it doesn't get caught in the way. When I get past it, I'll move it back into being closed. Just make sure whenever you stop and lift your presser foot that your needle is down. Stitch all the way across and make sure that folded edge stays folded and you don't want to sew right to the edge of the folded edge, just kind of about halfway through it. I'm trying to find where that thread is. Trim your thread. Now we're going to pin the zipper, one of the main zipper closures, so the one that has some interfacing, on top of the zipper that we just stitched to that one main panel. And you're going to place this panel right sides down, so pretty sides touching the pretty side of the zipper. You're making a zipper sandwich. I like to pin the short edges first, just to get all that lined up. And then pin the rest of the way across. And my zipper is open here and that's on purpose because when I get to sewing that I want to be able to get past the zipper pull. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew up this short end then come down this end and stop about halfway through the folded edge here and you'll stitch all the way across like that. Switch to a zipper foot so you can get a more accurate seam allowance. And make sure you pay special attention because, to the seam allowances because there are different seam allowances throughout the pattern depending on what we're sewing. I like to back stitch in my corners, so I'm just back stitching. I'm just making sure I'm at accurate seam allowance. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just checking. It's worth the effort. So there's my zipper pull that I'm approaching. I'm just going to zip this closed so that it zips the zipper pull out of the way. However, you could have unzipped yours all the way so that it's down here. I just like to have it there. I find I like it better when my zipper is closed. And I'm going halfway through that folded end. Trim all your threads. Now we're going to trim the corner here. 
So I trimmed it at the corner. I need my turning tool. I'm going to turn the zipper closure right sides out and I'm going to carefully poke out that corner. Oh, I thought I stitched there. I had a panic moment. I'm going to press these panels away from the zipper. So I'm just using my fingers to press. And then I'll use some clips to hold it in place. So I'll line everything up. And what I'm going to do is, normally you would stitch, you would top stitch this all the way around. However, I don't want to switch up my presser foot a few times. I want to go just with one presser foot. So I'm going to stitch the other side of the zipper panel to the zipper and then I'll top stitch everything. I'll press everything and then I'll top stitch everything. Another clip down. So just like that. So I'm going to leave that for now and I'm going to press this later. Got some dirt on there. So now we need to repeat that whole process for the second side of the zipper panel. So remember I have one that goes on top so I need to check which one is my top and which one is my bottom because remember I made a, I fussy cut my zipper. So with my bottom one without the interfacing, I'm going to line up the end of my zipper tape with that mark that we made. Oh, that went into my pocket. I wonder if I have any more in my pocket. I should probably check my laundry before I throw it in to be washed. So again, pin this all the way across. And then sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> I'm just holding that zipper pull, or I did hold it, and I'm still holding it out of the way. Now take the remaining main closure, I'm looking to see what this is, L piece, line it up. So I line up the short side edges first, then I line up the folded edge, pin it the rest of the way. And I'm going to repeat the same thing we did before, sewing up the one short side and across the long edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Just move that zipper pull out of the way so you don't hit it while you're sewing. And see, this isn't staying lined up for some reason. So I'm just going to repin it. All the way across. So sewing up that short edge, so move your zipper out of the way, that first half because you don't want to stitch over it. Now you can stitch this with your interfacing facing up if you want. I can feel where that interfacing is. I just like to back stitch in the corners. I just feel like it adds that extra bit of security. I'm approaching that pull, so I'm going to zip it out of the way. Now when you get to this end where your folded edges are, if you're noticing that the folded edges aren't going to line up, just adjust the one folded edge to make it line up. trim that corner and then I just trim down the side a bit too. 
turn it right sides out. Push out your corner. And now we're going to take this to our iron and we're going to give this whole thing a press to get this pressed nice and flat. And when we return, we will stitch the rest of our bag. All right, so I have pressed this and then I added some clips along the edges to help hold it together. Now we're going to top stitch all the edges all the way around. So each of the four edges of the main zipper closure are going to be top stitched and I'm just switching my zipper foot off back to my Teflon foot because I will need this when it comes time to sew the exterior. Up the one side, one short edge, across the long edge. And I'm just going to zip my zipper pull out of the way. I don't want to hit it. And then the bottom edge is just a basting. You're just basting that seam together. Oh, it keeps getting stuck on my the clips keep getting stuck on the edge here of my machine, which stops it from moving. I'll clip my threads when I'm done. zipper pull, zipping it out of the way. fabric is frayed, go ahead and trim those off as well because they will give you peekaboo threads later. There you go. And that is our main zipper closure completed both sides. So as you can see I wanted this one to have the zipper, the flower sort of line up. So that's what I did. So now we need to take our lining bottom K with the zipper pocket and we need to place this finished zipper, main closure zipper panels on top of the lining panel. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to make my center marks. Oops, I probably put pencil on my shirt. So I'm just folding it in half. And then I'm going to mark the centers. And just make sure the centers are marked on your lining, which they are. And this zipper, we need to have it open because that's what we're turning the pocket out through, or the bag out through later. So make sure your zipper is at least halfway open. Now, you're going to take that center mark you made and you're going to line it up with the center mark on the panel. Your lining panel is right sides up and your zipper panel is also right sides up. So it is lining side of the zipper panel against the right side of the lining panel. So zipper panel right side up and you'll know it's right side up because that's where your pull is. Lining panel right side up. And I need my zipper to close in the same direction as my zipper pocket. So make sure they're both closing in the same direction. If it's not, that's okay but I do like to have it in the same direction again as I was explaining earlier for when I'm wearing my bag. So you're going to place this and pin it all the way across. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now 
we need to grab our lining top J piece, wherever that is in here, right here. So your lining J piece, and you're going to place it right sides down against the right side of your main zipper closure. So line up the sides and then your center marks. Pin it all the way across. And then stitch that in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Just make sure when you're stitching that if you have a dangly zipper pull that it's not in the way. You don't want to run over that zipper pull. Clip your stitches. And then we're going to press the, line, the seam allowance towards the J piece, so up. So I'm pressing it up right now. And I'm just making sure that it presses this here too. So I'm just pressing it behind to really make sure it creases. You can take this to your iron and press it. I've just finger pressed it. And now we're going to top stitch this seam allowance we just pressed. So we're going to top stitch it. There we go, we have one side attached to one of our lining, lining panels. Now we need to attach the remaining side of the main zipper closure to our last lining piece and the last J piece. So again, line up those center marks, pin it in place, pin it all the way across. Stitch with the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm going to trim those threads here because I don't want them poking through in my finished bag later. The J piece right sides together with the right side of the main zipper closure. Line up all those center marks and the side edges. Clip it in place. And then sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. thing we did previously, press the seam up towards the J panel. And top stitch all across this J panel seam. And there's a lot of layers so you just want to take your time and Make sure nothing is under the needle that shouldn't be. For example, your zipper end. Trim your threads. Now we have our two lining panels connected with the zipper in the middle. 
Now we're going to put those to the side and we're going to create our gusset. For this, we need our two H pieces and our I piece. So that's the base and the two sides. We're going to make our center marks, although it's not really necessary on this. You know what, it's not really necessary. So what we're going to do is pin one base gusset right sides together with the side gusset. So line up your sides and if you've made a mark in the center you can line up the center marks as well. Pin it and then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. We're going to press the seam allowance towards gusset H, the side gusset here, so we're pressing it up towards the side gusset, and then we're going to top stitch that seam allowance. And then you're going to repeat that for the remaining short edge of the H gusset and the base. And we'll also do all those steps all over again for the lining pieces. So clipping the short edges together, sew it. kind of went a little wonky there. Just want to get a nice straight seam. I'm going to clip those threads. Press the seam towards the H piece just like that and top stitch that seam. it under the presser foot and trim those threads. Oops. Repeat that for the linings. So you'll have a lining base and two lining sides. Clip them together. I top stitch I'm just going to sew the second side so now I'm going to top stitch all the way across out all the way across lining done as well as our exterior. Now we're going to put everything together. So if you haven't already, mark the centers of your base, which I have. I've marked the centers of both my base pieces. Now, and your center, sorry, of your main panels as well. I've already done that as well, but I'm going to just draw it in a little darker so I can see it. Check that on my linings. Yes, and my linings have it as well. 
So first thing we're going to do is line up the center marks from the previous step with the center mark on your main panel. So the base center with the main panel center. Clip it in place. Then we'll match the top ends of the gusset to the top corners of the main panel. My chair's slipping away on me. So this top corner of the gusset with the top corner of the main panel. And remember that side gusset has a bit of a shape so you want to follow the shape as you're pinning as well. And make sure your handle is out of the way and nothing is twisted. So the other side gusset it in place and I'm just going to add a clip over there so I'm going to clip it all the way down easing it through the curves and then I'm going to add some snips into my curves. And what that'll do is that'll help open it up so when I'm stitching, I get a nice even stitch length. And as you can see, this fits perfectly. Another clip down. I don't remember how many that is. Three, maybe we'll see who's paying attention to how many clips I've dropped. And oh, almost lost another one. So I've used a lot of clips there in the curve, that's what I want. I want to make sure it stays together. Now remember that front zipper pocket, make sure that zipper is zipped out of the way so you don't hit it when you're sewing. And I'm coming around that curve, so I'm just pinning all the way around the curve, oops, all the way around the curve. And then as I mentioned, when I'm done pinning, I'll add some snips into the gusset and the exterior. Just make sure everything's nice and flat as well. So I'm just adding some more clips because, you know, more clips the better. Let's make some snips, and those snips are going to be just within your seam allowance. So I'm going to make sure that I'm snipping within my seam allowance. So I know what the measurement is for the seam allowance. And I just go in between my clips. So I just kind of push them over, and I go in between the clips. And I'm staying just within the seam allowance. As you can see, today my hands are not happy for some reason. There we go. So that's just going to help spread everything out as I'm sewing along. I'm going to grab my extension table. Because it's going to be easier with this. Keeps the, the bag as flat as possible. And I'm going to sew this with the gusset side up with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now remember, your gusset had a shape, so you want to make sure you keep that shape and you follow that shape the whole way through. And follow those curves as well.
just making sure everything stays flat here as I come around the curves. And remember where we pushed that panel so that the seam was pushed towards H? Make sure that seam, when you're coming over it, it stays flat. It's always easier to go that way, this way over it rather than towards it. Just going around the curves, taking my time to get that curve beautiful. Trim your threads. This is where you can check and make sure that there was no puckering or anything because if there is you can undo that area where there is puckering and just smooth it out then restitch it I'm just going to move my extension table I'm going to grab my uh, pinking shears actually I'm going to use my other scissors Sometimes my pinking shears, I'm not strong enough to squeeze to get through a lot of bulk. And I'm just trimming this seam allowance down. just binged at me. I don't know why. All right, so we have that first side pinned in place or sewn in place. Now we're going to repeat that for the second side of the exterior. So again, right sides together, line up those center markings. And it's always a little bit harder to sew the second side because you have a little bit more to keep out of your way. So you have to squish a little bit more. Don't be afraid of squishing your bag. We can fix that when we finish our bag and we give it a nice press. You can fix that all then. out of my way and remember you want to sew with the gusset up when we go to sew this in place it'll be easier to sew that way so again coming around these curves just make sure that you get everything all nicely in place Make sure you don't get any pleats. You don't want pleats. Smooth it out as much as you can as you're pinning it as well. I'm going to reach in and make sure that it's all smooth in there, which it is. Another clip gone. I didn't catch it fast enough.
and now I'm going to snip into my curves just like I did previously. Again, this just helps open up those curves so it smooths out and avoids those pleats. Spreads it out a little bit better. table again. So along that oops, seam, the side and the bottom to attach it to the gusset. There's a clip somewhere I think. Just moved it off my presser, my pedal. All right. that connected the H to the um, I piece. Make sure that seam stays flat and push towards the I piece. trimming this seam allowance now. Now that seam allowance has been trimmed. And you can see there's my gusset. I'm just going to feel to see if there's any pleats because usually I can just feel them. So we're going to move that to the side. Now we need to repeat that for the lining panels with the lining gusset. So line up right sides together, the gusset center. with the lining panel center. And I just realized when I top stitched my base, I accidentally top stitched it the wrong way. Instead of going towards I, mine goes towards H. Make sure you press it towards H. Make sure all your seam allowances are pressed in the right direction when you're pinning because you do have the seam allowance there for the um, J meeting the K piece. I love when big gussets just go on perfectly fit beautifully.
going to make snips into the seam on the curves. And I'm going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you'll want to pay attention because the seam allowance will be a bit different than what it was for the exterior. And make sure you're not sewing through your zipper panel, the main closure zipper panel. Closure zipper panel is. Just be careful. Keep your lining as flat as possible. I don't always worry about pleats in my lining. I figure it's in the bottom of the bag. I try to make it so that you don't have any. time getting past all the um, pieces of the bag so for example where that main zipper is because you feel that your presser foot which I mean there is a lot of space but you feel that your presser foot can't get past it go ahead and switch to your zipper foot to stitch this Oops. now we're going to trim the seam allowance and for this I'm going to use my painting shears I like to try and use pinking shears whenever I can, but as I was saying with the front, sometimes my hands aren't strong enough to cut through all the bulk and layers that may be in the exterior. So there's the one side attached. Now we're going to attach the second lining main panel. I actually just looked for it behind me, but it's attached because of the zipper. We're going to attach the second lining main panel to the gusset. So same thing, clip it all the way around. So clip the bottom and then clip the top edges. Tuck that zipper um, tape out of the way. up when I do this so I can see it better I get like a bird's eye view but I'm trying to sit so that you can see better so I'm just pinning and see how I come around this curve I just you know smooth it out around the curve carefully pinning Make sure the zipper tape 
if your tail is on this side is out of the way so you don't sew over it and also we want to make sure that pocket is open after we sew this you can do it now make sure it's halfway open I know I mentioned it earlier but make sure it's halfway open and make sure your zipper pull on the main closure is halfway open as well at least halfway open I'm going to make snips into my curve here way around with the seam allowance given in the pattern. your seam allowance again and one other extra step I'm going to do is at the top where my slip pocket is I'm going to stitch where the top of that pocket is just to help hold it a little bit more security in that area of the top just so it doesn't pull out of the seam because slip pockets and pockets do take a lot of stress on a bag depending on how much we load them or we pull at them and I load my pockets so just where the top where the zipper pocket or the slip pocket sorry is I'm just going to stitch over that in that area and now I've got my zipper open so now there's two options as I was mentioning for the final assembly for this bag option one is to do the drop-in lining method which would mean you wouldn't need to turn the bag at all after so you would have this right sides out and your lining would stay wrong sides out I'm just trying to turn this for you Trying to turn my exterior right side out. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point because we are going to fix it after. But there is your exterior. You can see it. Nice big bag. So for a drop in lining, it would be exterior right sides out, lining wrong sides out. And what you would do is you would fold down the top edge of both bags with the seam allowance given in the pattern and then you would stick the lining inside the bag, line up those folded edges all the way around, use some double sided tape and then stitch all the way around that bag and that's it. However, I'm doing this as a birth bag so exterior is right sides out, lining will be wrong sides out and I'm going to tuck the exterior inside my lining of my bag and remember I want that pocket on the back of the bag the zipper pocket on the back of the bag so I'm going to tuck this inside and for the drop-in lining I do have a tutorial that I'll link below that you can watch 
for how to do a drop in lining. It was for the Felicity tote. So I will link that below so that you can watch that if you need to, how to do a drop in lining if you prefer to do the drop in lining method. So I'm pinning my side seams together so you can either nest your seams, which means seam for the lining goes left and the seam for the exterior goes right, or press your seams open. You wanna make sure that those seams do line up though. And it's hard to believe but we're almost done. And I've got my center marks too on my gussets that I'm also making sure line up. So again, line up those. That clip almost went down with the others. So lining up the side seams, clip it in place, lining up my center marks, pin them. Make sure your handles are pushed down into the bag. Line up the center marks on the main panel with the lining main panel. So exterior center mark with the lining panel center mark. Once that's clipped, clip to the side. <clears throat> Clip all the way across. Again, center seam or center lined up with the center. This is also where, before I start stitching, I'll check to make sure that I have a full bobbin. So as you can see, I've pinned it. I'm going to check to make sure that I have a nice full bobbin because when it gets to this area, you don't want to be running out of thread. need my extension table because it's a big bag. So now we're going to sew around the top of the bag using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So sew all the way around the top. Make sure those handles stay down. I'm just repeating that just so that you don't accidentally have them poking out. They are to be down between the lining and the exterior right now. I just went off a little bit, so I'm going to go back to where my seam allowance is accurate. Seems like whenever I go around the side panel, sometimes I go off of it. There we go. Just because you're trying to maneuver a bag and everything. Again, don't be afraid to squish it. table out of the way. Now we need to trim this seam allowance down. I'm not going to use my pinking shears. We need to trim this seam allowance down. Just be careful as you're trimming. That you don't accidentally move your scissors and make them go towards your bag. There we 
go. Seam allowance is trimmed. Now we're going to turn the bag right sides out through that zipper pocket opening. Just pulling, I reach in and I grab the bottom of my bag and I just pull it up towards the opening. And it's squishy, so I can squish it. I'm just pushing it out. Nice big opening makes it easy and squishy materials make it easy too to birth your bag. So I'm just pushing everything back. I'm not closing up my lining just yet because I like to leave it till I'm done top stitching so that I know that everything looks nice and beautiful. So now what I need to do is push this top piece, so that was top J, down so that it's into the bag and we need to press this but I can't press it because I've used vinyl in some places for mine so I'm just going to use my clips to hold it in place until I top stitch the top edge of my bag and I'm just clipping all the way around and I'm paying special attention to make sure that seams are still lined up putting lots of clips and if you're worried about bulk switch to a bigger fo um, foot a bigger needle and you can also use a walking foot too that might help get through and your stitch length as well being longer will help with sewing through the bulk you can use a seam whacker to whack the seams that are bulky I usually just use a hammer and then I take a scrap piece of fabric and I put it between the hammer and my bag so I don't cause damage to my bag using a hammer and I just hammer those seams flat if I need to that's another little trick if your machine is struggling getting through any bulky areas So keep clipping if you can't press like I can't. Normally I would try to press from the lining side, but I'm afraid I'll still hit my vinyl, or faux leather, sorry. So actually it is the same thing. This vinyl is the same thing as faux leather because of the material it's made from, depending on what you want to call it. So now I don't have a free arm on my machine. So I can't really top stitch this as easily because I don't have a free arm, I can't get it around. So what I need to do is grab my bag and turn it so it is lining size out. It's a big workout, bags, making bags, I have to admit, especially for my four arms. So it doesn't need to be perfect just as long as it's turned and you can have a nice area at the top and it's nice and easy to access, nice and flat and pressed. So now with my extension table again, we're going to top stitch all the way around and I'm using a red thread so I'm going to start where there's some red on my bag that's where I'm going to start and I'm going to back stitch now don't forget to keep your zipper um, tail out of the way and these closures down into the bag the only thing you're stitching is this top edge of the bag here so don't go over your handles nothing like that just the top edge of the bag and I lost another clip there it is I wonder who is counting how many clips I've lost. So I'm going to start right on the red here because I'm going to be backstitching. If you don't want to backstitch, you can leave long tails. So don't backstitch, leave long tails, stitch all the way around. When you get back to where you started, leave long tails, pull them through and tie them off. And you can take a needle and pull it through the seam there and tie them off. And then you'll have no back stitching at all on your exterior of your bag. But because this is red here, you're not going to notice it as much. All right, so I've back stitched to get started. And I'm just taking my time, 
going over that ball in that seam right there. And don't be afraid, as I mentioned before, to squish your bag. Squish the bag. when you stop if you're repositioning your bag another clip down if you're repositioning your bag that your needle is down and that you make sure you position it so that it stays straight and you don't go off of how your top stitching was so keep that seam allowance accurate here keeps trying to come up and wants to join in the top stitching party. to trim all those threads from stitching. I can't pick these up. My hands are done, which is great because we're done our bag pretty much. My hands are starting to hurt. So now we're going to turn this right sides out. reach in through that opening that we haven't closed yet that's why I don't close my openings right away and press the edges of your fabric so just run your hand along the seam allowance you can even use a turning tool along the edges of the seam allowance push your lining back into the bottom of the bag now we need to grab out that zipper pocket and we've already pressed those edges under, which is nice. So all we need to do now is pin the edges. And where that edge is here that it's raw, the where the seams were sewn, I just kind of tuck it down inside so that it's not sticking out. So pin the seam. straight across and then we're going to sew this. You can also slip stitch this by hand if you want. I'm just using a machine because it's in the bottom of the bag in the pocket. Don't really see it as much, especially once you fill up your pocket. your pocket back in to itself making sure you get those corners pushed in zip my pocket closed push my lining back down to get it nice and flat such a big bag it's awesome now the last step is installing our zipper end and for this you need your zipper end some glue and a screwdriver. So first thing I like to do is first zip up the zipper a little bit. Fold your zipper tape so that it is under the zipper teeth. Oh by the way there's a measurement here for how long to have your zipper tail. I don't mind having a zipper tail that length. I kind of like it because it can dangle a little bit. But if you want, you can trim your zipper tail. You know what? Maybe I will. I'll trim it just a little bit. A 
There we go. I trimmed my zipper tail. That's probably about the measurement given in the pattern. So now take your zipper end and fold the tape under the zipper teeth and then add a clip. Grab your metal zipper end, just one of them, and I like to put some glue inside it. If your zipper ends are different, please do follow your manufacturer's instructions for installing it. You actually should always follow manufacturer's instructions. So once the, the zipper tape is folded in, stick this, the end of the zipper tape, into the opening of the metal zipper end. Push it in as far as it will go. Just like that. Then, cat my glue, grab the little screws that come with the metal zipper end. And you just need one, so I need to get out one. install the screw into the zipper end. Don't hold the zipper end in your hand because if your screwdriver slips it could stab you and you don't want that. Now for some reason that's not pushing in. Just gonna sort of stick my scissors in there, smooth it out inside. See what I mean? That just slipped on me. And the nice thing is, is if this screw ever comes out, there is glue holding the end on. And I've tried to actually remove them just to test it to see after they've been dried. I've tried to remove it. I've unscrewed the screw and tried to pull it off the end and you can't. The glue does really help it and it does really help it stick. So you really can't move, remove that um, zipper end. So I'm just putting this out of the way so that you get a nice view of the bag here because it is a big bag. So there's the bag. This is called the Ira Tote. We've now completed it. That's the back. That's the front. The front has this zipper pocket here, which is perfect for a phone. My phone fits nicely inside, and I have a pretty big phone. It's kind of like a brick. It fits nicely inside. I'm going to remove the tape that's on the end there to protect it. We have our top zipper closure. Inside, we added a slip pocket with a divider, and then your zipper pocket. And it's a huge, roomy tote. Love it. Perfect size for me. You can even make this with some waxed canvas inside or some waterproof canvas inside and make this into like a beach bag if you wanted. Nice, beautiful, big bag. So there you have it. Our Ira Tote is all complete. It's ready to be taken out and shown off to the world. But before you do that, don't forget to take some pictures and post them on social media and post them with the hashtags given in the pattern so that we can all admire your beautiful Ira totes. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Thanks for sewing with me. Have a wonderful day. Bye.